Hello folks, I am The Bitter Clinger and today I want to show you how to create and use your own custom portraits in Pathfinder Kingmaker. Pathfinder uses three images for each character portrait and each of these three images must be a specific size and a specific file type. So I'm going to show you how to take just about any image from the internet and create these necessary image files to use as custom portraits in the game. And I won't be using any expensive or complicated software. I'll only be using a web browser and MS Paint, which comes free with every version of the Windows operating system. Now, there are plenty of people who already know how to use applications like Photoshop and Paint.net, so I'm going to do this video in reverse order. I'm going to start by showing you how to add images that are already the correct size and format to Pathfinder Kingmaker so you can start using them for your new character creation and hired companions. Then I'll follow that up with the second part of the video, which will be showing you how to use MS Paint to turn your favorite JPEG images into custom portraits for use in the game. Okay, let's jump right in and start using some custom portraits here. This first part of the video assumes you already know how to get three images saved on your computer that are the correct dimensions and in the PNG file format. I'll throw the necessary dimensions up on the screen, but if you're just listening to this video, you'll need a large image that is 692 wide by 1024 tall. Then you'll need a medium image that's 330 wide by 432 pixels tall. And finally, you'll need a small image that's 185 pixels wide and 242 tall. Again, all three of those images need to be saved in the PNG file format. Once you have your three images ready to go, you start a new game in Pathfinder Kingmaker. Just accept the default difficulties because we're not actually going to be playing the game. Next, you'll select the option to create a new character from scratch, and that will take you to the character portrait selection. Just under the portraits, you'll see an image of a teeny tiny little head. This is actually a button that will allow you to import custom portraits. So let's click that tiny button and follow it up by clicking on Open Portraits Folder. Now, if your system works like mine, the game is minimized on the taskbar, but you have a Windows folder open with three placeholder images. You can delete those three images now and copy your custom portraits into that folder. You then have to rename your custom images to match the names of the default images that were in that folder. The correct names were small, medium, and full length. Uh, be careful on the spelling of full length. The three L's can be a little tricky. Also, when you're renaming multiple files like this, just use the tab key to move on to the next file when you're done typing. That will speed things up a bit. Once that's done, you open up the game and click the Refresh Portrait button. If you've done everything correctly, you'll see your custom portraits appear on the screen. If the game is still displaying one or more default portraits, then one of your image files is either not in the PNG format or it's not exactly the right size. If you're off by even one pixel, the image won't load in the game. Alright, now that your new custom portrait is displaying correctly, you can use it for your new character or any new hireling companions you purchase from the Merc vendors. When you're ready to add more custom portraits, simply repeat the steps from before to return to this screen. Click this little plus button and open the portraits folder. And that's it. Now you're ready to create and use as many custom portraits as you like. However, I must leave you with a word of caution here. Pathfinder Kingmaker typically uses between 1.8 and 1.9 gigabytes of memory as I'm playing the game on my system. But when I start messing around with custom portraits, the memory just keeps ticking up and up and up, even when the game is just idling in the background. So there may be a problem there. But my advice would be to exit the game whenever you're done adding new custom portraits, just in case there's a memory leak or some other issue with that part of the game. Alright, now it's time for a little MS Paint tutorial. So if you already know how to do all that, thanks for watching. For the rest of us, it's on to part two.
If you're still here, that means you haven't changed the default image editor on your system, so it's probably still MS Paint. And that means you should be able to simply right click an image, select Edit from the pop up menu, and that image will open up in MS Paint. If that doesn't work, you can always open MS Paint by using the Windows plus R keys and running it manually. But hold on, let's take a step back for a minute. Why do we need this MS Paint stuff? Well, the first reason is 99% of all the images on the internet are stored in JPEG format, but we need a PNG format to use as a portrait. And it's not just a matter of renaming the file from .jpg to .png. We must convert the file from one type to the other, and MS Paint will do that for us. We also need three different sizes of image to use for our portrait and simply resizing the same image three times won't look right in the game. So fortunately, MS Paint has a crop function, the ability to resize images, and it can convert JPEG files to PNG files. Now, MS Paint isn't very sophisticated, and it certainly has its limitations, but every portrait you've seen in this video was resized, cropped, and converted by MS Paint. Okay, now let's get on with the demonstration. Here we have our female paladin image, straight from the internet, in JPEG format. It's also the wrong size, so the first thing I'm going to do is resize the image. With 736 horizontal pixels, it's already wider than the 692 pixel specification for the game. On the other hand, 1013 vertical does not meet the 1024 pixel requirement for portrait. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the vertical height of the image to 1024 pixels. Now, did you notice what happened there? When I made the image taller, it also got wider automatically. That's because of this checkbox here that says Maintain Aspect Ratio. You want to keep that on most of the time because if you change the width and height of an image without maintaining the aspect ratio, you can cause the image to stretch and distort. So unless you're making small adjustments to the size, enforce the aspect ratio. All right, so now what do we do? Our image is still 743 pixels wide, but we need it to be 692. We can't resize it without distorting the image, so instead we're going to use the select tool and crop the image to the correct width. As we're selecting a portion of the image, the status bar at the bottom will tell us the size of our selection area, so we'll know when we've selected the right size. And then we'll click the crop button on our toolbar to cut anything we have not selected out of the picture. Alright, now we have an image that is 692 by 1024 pixels, which is exactly the right size, but it's still only a JPEG image. So let's go up to the File menu, select Save As, then PNG is our file type. We name it something to let us know that this is our full length or largest image. And that's one of the three images. Done. Next, we need our medium sized image. This is going to be our character shot from the waist up, more or less. But we have a problem. Because the trident is so much taller than our paladin, there is all this extra space up here above our head. So we're going to crop out some of the image that isn't necessary for the smaller portraits and resize the image to allow us to crop a decent looking medium portrait. Remember to use the selection size indicators on the status bar as you're cropping your medium image. And don't forget to save as PNG file format. Finally, we'll use our select tool to crop our 185 by 242 pixel image and save that as a PNG file. And just like that, we've downloaded an image from the internet using a browser and created a good looking set of portraits that we can use in Pathfinder Kingmaker. Now you can just follow the instructions from the first part of this video to import them into your own playthrough. Well, that's it for me folks. I hope you found this video useful and if you want to see related information, then follow me on Twitter at underscore bitterclinger underscore. I don't post politics or pictures of my lunch. It's pretty much all game related stuff, so if you have a Twitter account, you may want to follow me there. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Bitter Clinger, signing out. <laughs>